So we went out and got me some dresses, nightgowns, hair barrettes, tights. We got pink shirts. We got all this girl stuff. It was so fun. And then, like, after a month of them, like, being really supportive, I told them that I was a 100% girl. It made me feel so free. I felt like there was, like, a weight that lifted off of my shoulders. True Wilson opening up about her journey for acceptance. Uh, True, all grown up here on the BT couch, by the way. <laughs> yeah. Wow, welcome. Christina Willings, uh, director of the short film Beauty, uh, joining us right now. Uh, your reaction to watching this now, knowing that this, this film has run over several festivals over the years, uh, well, what is it like seeing that and the reaction you've heard to it? Well, the reaction has been incredible. I've gotten so many, uh, I've talked to so many people after views of the show and they've been just incredible. They said that they're, that they're inspired, that, they're, that they feel like so much hope for the future. And that's all I really want to get from my advocacy and all my work and all these projects. I just want that hope and that, that, that light to come through. Like through all this fear and through all this darkness, I just want to be that light for people. Well, you are the light and beacon of courage uh, looking at your story, your journey, and Christina, in this film, the journey of uh, five kids sharing, celebrating their own identity. How did you want to expand the definition of gender identity with this project? Well, it's not really that I wanted to expand the definition. Uh, I just wanted to actually amplify the voices of the kids who are doing that work for themselves and for us all. Um, that I think that people are starting to think about and approach gender differently. And um, I, my intent was to create an invitation for everybody to enter into this more authentic kind of space, a place um, where we can move a little bit beyond gender polarity and ask ourselves the questions, how do I really want to show up? How much space do I want to move in? Do I want a whole palette of colors and of clothing and of expression to play with? Or am I going to limit myself? To this tiny little channel and uh, also for us to actually listen to kids about their own experience because Sometimes they're incredibly smart and we so often don't hear them or don't take them seriously I want to let them lead well these stories and uh, true uh, along uh, with four others uh, definitely leading by example but when we look at and the reason I asked you about the expansion of definition the term gender creative mm -hmm. uh, th this was new to me and understanding that what does gender creative truly represent well, it, it really, I think, is a term that seeks to capture, especially for kids, um, that experience of showing up on your own terms. So, um, you know, it's a definition that has been applied, I think, partly by um, a within a paradigm that expects certain kinds of behaviors and certain kinds of gender expression, right? But really, it, it provides space for people to move beyond that. Like, what do you think, True? And to kind of find a space to show up in a way that feels actually more real. Well, yeah, definitely. I think it's all about like giving the kids the ability and letting them know that they can be more expressive and like like bend like bend the rules and just like be themselves and totally no matter what that means and not having to be confined to these boxes that society puts them in. And gender cool. You just mentioned off camera is one of the projects you've been working on. Tell us about that and how opportunities are now opening up to, to become more educated on choices kids are making. Well, yeah, Gender Cool has been an incredible project to be involved in. I've met all the other champions are incredible, and we like Gender Cool is all about who we are, not what we are, and showing our like our talents and our hobbies and like everything about us. And oh yeah, we just happen to be trans, and showing the people inside us and not the label that we are placed with. So what's still difficult for you today, knowing the progress that's been made, how people are open to having these conversations like we see at film festivals, what's the most difficult part you experience day in and day out? Well, I think, <clears throat> I think the most difficult part would have to be just those people who refuse to listen and the ones who like refuse to hear me and just shut everything out and are just so, and just grasp so strongly to their to their views and like their close-sighted minds that it's it's hard to get to them and I, I just want uh, I know it's not an ideal but I just want a world where we are free and we are free to express ourselves and free to be gender creative and be ourselves 
and it's just it's hard knowing that there are some people that you just can't reach. Well, the beauty of uh, this, I guess, medium with film is it's educating, it's open people's eyes. The conversation is happening. Thanks to you two for it. Uh, the Real to Real Festival happening, uh, r2rfestival.org, the website. And when is the screening again, Christina? The screening is on April 11th at the Roundhouse at 10 a.m. and 11.45. Excellent. So we'll get the word out and let this run the film circuit as it continues. Uh, thanks again to you both. Uh, we'll take a break. Your top news story.